I recently bought a used lathe that came with three chucks and a faceplate that weren't in the best condition and needed this assembly and cleaning. And since the main channel video about the lathe already had plenty of that, I do this work here on the second channel and then also check what kind of accuracy I get from these chucks. I started with the central forger, which was definitely in the worst condition. Covered in gritty dust and moving not too smoothly. Seeing the scratch marks along the jaw side is also a sign of grinding dust. Time to get rid of it. This assembly starts with the pull studs on the back. The actual chuck bolts are extremely tight, which was to be expected. Wow. Okay. Those bolts are also 12.9 great. Makes sense. Then to separate the plates, there are two more threads for the bolts. Lots of excess grease. And there are all the parts. Moving on to the three jaw. It's in slightly better shape, but still worth taking apart and cleaning. Basically the same construction as the four jaw. Now the big forge jaw here is actually brand new, but I think it's absolutely not lubricated. I mean, just listen to this. Looks and sounds completely dry. Yep, not even a hint of grease, so this gets disassembled as well. But having individual jaws, it comes apart much easier. The inside here is also full of grit. To remove the screws, I had to hammer out these fork-shaped retaining pins.
Now on to cleaning, which is mostly removing old grease and debris from usage and manufacturing. I really should have gotten a parts washer for this kind of work. That would have really sped up some of these steps. All parts with some surface rust I scrubbed with some Scotch-Brite and WD-40. Makes them almost brand new again. The small parts I just wiped a bit and then I could borrow the ultrasonic cleaner from Stefan. What an exciting evening. The last chuck, but not really chuck to take a look at, is the faceplate. It just had the pull studs and many sharp edges that I immediately took care of. Other than that, I didn't clean it too much since I will probably just reface it when I need it, but it made sure that the interface surface is properly clean. There was some wax or similar on the short taper that I had to remove, maybe leftovers from the manufacturing still, so it's a good chance this faceplate has never been used before. Let's see how it fits. Looks good. These cam studs get screwed in until this line here is kind of flush with the surface. Right about this. And this screw just secures them in place. It will be loose afterwards. In the meantime, the army of small parts are out of the ultrasonic and I gave everything another blast with brake cleaner and compressed air. We have the pull studs, the jaws, screws, forks, bushings, gears and more jaws. Now everything is clean and we can start reassembly and greasing, starting with the big four jaw. In terms of which grease, I did a bit of research and most people seem to recommend this stuff here. Well, that really is a paste. I lubricated all moving parts and sliding surfaces, but since this paste is a lot more viscous than the old stuff, I didn't use as much. Another retaining pin with a little bit of oil to hopefully make that simpler. And hopefully I get the alignment right. Turns freely. Can't come out. Looks good. And while it's laying like this, I can install the pull studs. Now a little bit more grease for these surfaces and I can install them. That's the forger done. Moving on to the next one, the three jaw.
Here again, lubricating all moving surfaces. There are just a lot more of them compared to the forger. Then I also remembered that I wanted to stone the mating surfaces. This did remove quite a bit of burrs and high spots. Beautiful. Since this paste has a pretty high viscosity, it spins pretty tight, but it's smooth. This is done as well and now basically a new chuck now, so let's get the last one done, the small forger. Since it's the same again in super speed. I'm also applying the paste to the cam studs of the spindle nose to have them nice and lubricated as well. And then I install it from below so gravity holds in the spring. Now I essentially got three new chucks and a ready to go faceplate. Let's see what numbers I got in terms of runout. After three jar mounted, a precision ground bar chucked up and the indicator about four centimeters from the chuck and I get about one one hundredth of a millimeter. That is as good as I could hope for. Let's check the four jaw. Here we got about the same, oh yeah. Seeing those numbers definitely tells me this was worth it. And now with the individual jaw, four jaw chuck, I can check the repeatability of the spindle nose. This was also the first time I've been setting up something in a four jaw chuck. I hope with more practice, this will be faster. That's as close as I got it for now, about 5 microns run out. So let's remount the chuck and see if I get the same numbers. Move it by one increment. Okay, let's see. And I'm seeing um, quite a lot. That's not good. Um, hmm. I removed and remounted it again with a more even pattern for tightening the cam studs. Okay, looking better again, but not as good as in the beginning, obviously. 
But it's definitely a chuck issue because checking the spindle nose directly, that's basically perfect. You can't see nothing with this indicator. And with this one that shows two microns, still almost nothing. And also checking the face run out. Very hard to judge because in this resolution, this is more or less reading the surface roughness. So the inaccuracy is definitely chuck related. It also makes sense because the chuck taper is only turned and not ground like the spindle nose. But this then could also mean that the other two chucks have different runouts depending on the orientation I mount them. Well, and that's the case. I measured variations between one and five one hundredths of a millimeter. But it's easy to deal with. I made a mark on the spindle nose figured out the best orientation for each chuck, made a mark on them as well. And that's the orientation they will always be mounted at. Now to make it complete, let's also mount the faceplate. Wow, it's actually running pretty true. But still, when I'm gonna use it, I think I'll first reface it. Like for most jobs, the three jaw will be the main chuck. However, I think I will also have uses for the small four jaw and of course the big four jaw. 